<clears throat> All right, so what's up everybody? Grim Green back here today. Thank you so much for joining me again. I love the Caliburn. I make no apologies about that on my YouTube. I think it's honestly the best refillable pod system out there. I mean, what else is there? Yearn has refillable pods, but those pods, I feel, are a little bit too finicky. The Caliburn just works great and the pods are really consistent. And if you're a Caliburn user like I'm a Caliburn user, you've probably noticed two things that we're going to address today. One is that $15 for a four pack of coil heads gets expensive. And two, this 550 ma or milliamp hour battery doesn't quite last as long as you want it to. We're gonna be addressing both of those issues today. We're gonna be rebuilding a Caliburn coil head thanks to Coilmaster and their rebuilding kit. And first things first, we're gonna be talking about this P4 PCC from JMate. So JMate just makes PCCs. It's kind of what they do. They make multiple different versions for the uh, Jewel pod. But I don't have a Jewel, so why would I have a Jewel PCC? It wouldn't make any sense. So for anybody curious, PCC stands for personal charging case, and that's exactly what this is. I've been using one with my Caliburn for a while now, and it's pretty cool. It's pretty convenient. I do have a few gripes with it though, but we'll get there in a second. So you get micro USB for charging your PCC. The PCC itself has an internal 1200 ma or milliamp hour battery. First thing you need to do is install this little connector port into the bottom of your Caliburn battery. It's just a micro USB. So with that installed on the bottom of your battery, all you need to do is just place it in here and it starts charging. Light on the battery starts blinking to show you that it's charging. This battery was actually kind of dead. And then these series of lights down here are gonna show you the actual charge level of your PCC. And that's it. It'll do it, it'll charge it consistently. It works great. It's kind of the size of a checkbook. If anybody remembers carrying around a checkbook, it's kind of back pocketable, you can sit on it. It's kind of front pocketable and you can sit with it. It's overall not too big and bulky. My main gripe with it is it's really kind of just Boring. Really kind of a bare minimum PCC. No real bells and whistles. There's no really unique markings on it either. So you can kind of grab it. And unless you notice this tiny, tiny, tiny little JMate logo right there. Yeah, that's the one. Then you can't really tell what's up, what's down, where the hinge is, where it isn't. I always kind of search around for it just a little bit before I get it open. I didn't make any effort for this to be slick in any way, like any sort of magnetic closures that would have like, punk snapped it shut or maybe like a little spring-loaded like button you could just press and it would kind of pop open something to make it a little bit more, I don't know, fun. The price on it is really only about 30 bucks, so not really gonna break the bank. And I suppose you could always just have plenty of surface for stickers if you're a sticker person. And then you can kind of open it. You do kind of have to grab the tip of your Caliburn, pull it out, you can vape it. And this coil head desperately needs to be replaced. So instead of replacing it, we, we're gonna try to rebuild it. Coil Master makes a Caliburn rebuild kit. I'm not honestly sure I have the ability to do this, but I want to do it so bad, so we're just going to dive right into it. Yeah, there's that uh, JMate case, a little bit more up close and personal. And you can see there is like a little tab right here for opening it and closing it, but it doesn't really stay shut very well. I wish it was like cooler or clickier or something. I don't know, it's just very bare bones, but it works kind of awesome. And yeah, plenty of room for stickers. Holy crap, so let's get into this uh, Caliburn rebuilding kit. Kind of intimidated by this. It does come with a tool, it does some come with cotton, and it does come with many vertical coils. So the problem is I wanna rebuild this Caliburn pod, but it still has a whole mess of liquid in it. Yeah, it's definitely gonna get messy. In fact, I might go try to dump this out real quick. All right, I got as much of the liquid out of there as I possibly could. So the first step they say is to take out these contact pins. Got a small pair of tweezers here. I also got a ceramic pair of tweezers on standby. I think these are the only tools I'll need. So we try to take the pins out. Oh, these tabs need to get untabbed right here, which is easier said than done. Okay, I see. Get a screwdriver under there. And eventually, those tabs will release. And all of these pieces can kind of just come 
out. Leads release out of there. Little O-ring right there. Oh, that's right. This is in two parts and you have to like slam it on the table. All right, let me do some rinsing. So everything comes apart really easy and I managed to rinse everything out. The only part that gave me a little bit of a pain in the ass, and I guess it'll be easier to do it the second time. Maybe the first time was just rough, but the little coil head itself is in two pieces and it's press fit together. So you have to use their little tool and you kind of put it in here like this. I held it with a pair of pliers and then I grabbed a hammer and kind of thwacked it and that will eject this out and loosen that out. So far that's been the most difficult thing. I wish I would have tried the hammer thing before I tried tweezers and everything else. It probably would have gone a lot faster. But now, including those contact pins, we've literally stripped a Cali burn down to its just bare essentials and supposedly you can rebuild it. So let's keep this party going. One of the hassles of the way that this is packaged, all the coils just kind of thrown in there, is they like to wrap themselves around each other. So you end up spending try time trying to untangle these coils because you can't just rip them apart because you'll ruin the coil. It's kind of obnoxious the way that those are in. So we got a coil on the little rod tool here. You take the cotton and you're gonna put it behind one of the leads and then we're gonna wrap it around this coil. And then when we get down to the end, we're gonna leave a little bit hanging off and we put the first part of this uh, pod back on here. The slotted piece, not the base with the holes in it. <sighs> Fairly easy enough to get that on there and then we continue wrapping this cotton around the coil head. Thrilling entertainment. Then now we take our tiny little piece right here and we're gonna slide into the tiny little piece right here. There's a big side and a small side. This goes in the small side. You gotta seat this back in there. It's press fit, so you need to press fit it back in there. Got it all back seated in there. And pro tip, don't try to hammer it in. I just used a very large pair of pliers like this and sort of went around and went juke, 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 kind of just press fit it all back in there. I guess the next step is to get this O-ring on here. Oh, okay, never mind. That was easy. The leads just go right through the middle. Now we have to get these leads through the very tiny holes in the bottom of this. Aha! Not impossible, but a little bit difficult. This is just my first try at this, and I think the more you do it, the quicker you'll get at it. Same as coil building for an RDA. You gotta cut your weeds that are poking out of the bottom here now. And then these contact pins have to go back in those holes. Well, that's gone forever. Okay, so that one pin went launching across my room. I somehow found it. I somehow got these back in. And look, it's honestly not that difficult. I found it easier to just get the pins in with my fingers than with tweezers. I just grabbed it. You find the hole, press it in with your thumb. Contacts are in. If that means that you go in there, can you prime this now? Can I put some liquid in there first? I think I might do that just to prime it. This is something you don't really get to do with the Cali burn. So I'm not gonna flood it, but I'm gonna put some liquid in there. That's just an O-ring, so that pops in there. And the whole thing can slide back into the body. These tabs should click back into place. I think that's it? Is it just me or does it look crooked in there? Does that look crooked? You can see I tore up the bottom pretty good trying to get those tabs released. That's been the hardest part so far. The rest of it, pretty straightforward. Getting these tabs to release from the tank, whew, that's the hardest part. I chewed the bottom of mine up. But it appears that it's back together and if all goes according to plan, I can fill this up with some liquid and it should hold the liquid and wick it into my newly built coil head. All right. All together, holding, holding. Holding! All right, I really want to get this on a battery and see if it vapes. First, we got to charge the battery in the JMA Caliburn charger. See how it all comes full circle? Normal view, normal view. Flawless. I legitimately can't believe it's vaping this well. It feels like a brand new pod that I just opened and filled. Beautiful, it's crackly, nice, flavorful. I put some six, get out of there. I put some six milligram Java granola bar in here. 
Delicious, delicious. So here's what I'll say about that building experience. The first time was a little bit rough. The more you do it though, like I said, I think you'll get better and better at it. The two kind of pain in the ass parts were, like I said, releasing those tabs and then separating the coil head into its two parts using that little tool and like a hammer. It's an involved process and this isn't going to be a oh, I need a new coil head, I'll just go rebuild one real quick. I have a feeling that if you go down this rebuilding road, it's going to be one of those things that's like an event where you take like four or five of your Caliburn heads and rebuild them all at the same time so you have a fresh set of coil heads. A four pack of coil heads is usually about 15 bucks. This rebuild kit, seven dollars. Seven dollars with the potential to possibly have nine rebuilt new coil heads. And like I said, it's involved, okay? This isn't just new pod, go. It's involved, but if you're willing to put in the work, it will save you some money. Honestly, that Coilmaster kit comes with extra, extra cotton, so theoretically, you could maybe even build your own coils with wire and then continue using that cotton and that tool to rebuild them. Anyway, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. I love the Caliburn, and these are two things that, in my opinion, make the Caliburn a lot better, a lot more usable. I love the PCC, I love the extra battery life that it gives me, and I love the idea of being able to rebuild my own Caliburn heads. It makes the pod feel a little bit less like a closed system. Anyway, that's what I got for today, everybody. Links are not allowed in the description, so you're gonna have to use that Google foo. Thanks so much for watching, and remember, no matter what any crooked politician tells you, absolutely, keep on vaping.